This is the story of the book of Judges, which of course follows the book of Joshua in the English Bible. Judges is named for a period of time, a time when Israel was ruled by judges. You might say that um, from the time of the Exodus, Israel was first of all ruled by Moses and then by Joshua. But on Joshua's death, there was no strong leader who took over the leadership like Moses and Joshua had provided it. And uh, so a whole series of people were raised up, kind of one after the other, pretty much as Israel needed. In other words, there was no real national leader. There were just tribal leaders. And because the tribes were divided up into tribes, they didn't have any national unity, and so their enemies would frequently divide them and conquer them. Um, So a judge was kind of a ruler, kind of a king, kind of a general, kind of a priest, kind of a prophet, um, kind of a judge, somebody who saw to it that justice prevailed if at all possible. Some of the judges were good and some of the judges were not so good. So it was a very uneven, very chaotic, very difficult time in Israel's history. The storyline starts with uh, the end of the book of Joshua with the continuing battles going on for the conquest of Canaan. And uh, this continues uh, because the uh, Canaanites, the uh, original inhabitants of the land, are not entirely subdued and expelled. And so there continue to be skirmishes and even cities that are held by the Canaanites. And uh, Israel is uh, um, pretty much continuously Um, at war. Um, And and the storyline makes it very clear that when Israel is faithful, um, then things go well. But when Israel is unfaithful, things go very badly. And Israel is frequently unfaithful. So you have a lot of stories about Israel's disobedience and their unfaithfulness and their rebellion uh, against God and against those that God appoints to lead. And so as a result of this, they get into big trouble. Their enemies come against them and defeat them, and people are taken into slavery, and their cities are raided, and their crops are destroyed, their animals are captured. And uh, then they cry out to God for help, and at that point God raises up a judge to lead the army and to uh, provide the kind of leadership necessary to get back on top, and then the thing goes through the same cycles all over again. So throughout the book of Judges, you have these continual cycles of failure and success, failure and success up and down. Typical is the story of Samson. Um, You undoubtedly remember the story of Samson, uh, the young boy who was born to elderly parents who never thought they would have a child. They conceived a child as a direct answer to prayer, and so they dedicated him to God in a very early age. They um, gave him to the temple um, where he was raised by the uh, prophet Eli, uh, the judge Eli. And um, when he grew older, he was a mighty warrior. And uh, he uh, again and again led the people of Israel in battle against the Philistines, and personally was uh, victorious in a lot of skirmishes, killed a lot of people. Um, He had prodigious strength. And um, remember, he had a girlfriend named Delilah, who was not an Israelite. She was a Philistine. So she was a daughter of the enemy. And uh, she was constantly trying to find out the source of his strength. And um, he had kind of a fatal attraction with Delilah. And uh, finally, she found out that his strength was in his hair, and she cut his hair, and and his enemies captured him and put out his eyes and took him to their capital city to make fun of him. And uh, eventually, he uh, was vindicated on his enemies by uh, when his hair grew back, and he pushed down the pillars and brought down the temple and killed a lot of Philistines. It, the story is kind of characterized in chapter 21 and verse 25 by this statement that says there was no king in Israel in those days but everyone did what was right in his own eyes and that sort of becomes the description of what this whole period of time was like there was chaos because everyone was doing what was right in his own eyes and uh, there was no national law there was no central authority it was just uh, chaotic 
um, messed up um, kind of anarchy. And um, that uh, that sort of summarizes the story of Joseph. I think the one big big lesson that we get out of it is that faithfulness to God yields peace and prosperity. And when God is forgotten, and especially when God is disobeyed and people turn against him, that leads to trouble, to chaos, and to national pain. Um, and uh, the people just never seem to learn that lesson. Of course, you know, one of the big questions is how well have we learned it? We tend to turn to God when things go badly and say, oh God, rescue me. And then when he does, we tend to forget all about him when things are going well and uh, don't remember him again until we're in trouble again. So it's a story that even though it's thousands of years old is still up to date. And that of course is the genius of the biblical stories.